Thank you very much indeed, Joy, for your ministry and song tonight. What lovely pieces, what pieces that proclaims the gospel message. And we do trust tonight, unsafe friend, if you're here, that tonight will be the night you'll come home and find the Savior. I want you to turn with me to the Word of God. We're turning to John's Gospel, chapter 11, this evening. The Gospel of John, chapter 11, and commencing to read at verse 30. John 11, and verse 30. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in the place, in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then which were with her in the house and comforted her, comfort her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. And when Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Isn't it lovely to know tonight that the Savior sorrows with us? And said, verse 34, Where have ye led him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some said, some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again groaning in himself cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. And Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, By this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou shouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus saith unto them, Loose him, and let him go. And then many of the Jews which came to Mary had, and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing to the reading of His own precious truth. You don't need me to tell you tonight, friends, that the cemetery and the graveyard is a very cold place. We've all been there. We all realize tonight the coldness of the cemetery or the coldness of the graveyard. Why? Why? It's because Death is there. And it's cold because there we're brought face to face tonight with the finality of life. Upon every graveyard gate, upon every cemetery wall, you can hang the words of the great king of Israel of da called David, where he said in 1 Kings chapter 2 and verse 2, I must needs go the way of all the earth. You know, dear unsaved friend tonight, every cemetery, and every graveyard has this one message for you. Your life comes to an end. 
you face death. And sometimes a graveyard asks the question, where will you be in eternity? In our Scripture reading this evening, and through the Scriptures tonight, God brings us to a cemetery. He brings us to a graveyard. Not only is death here, not only is decay here, not only is the finality of life here, but Christ is here, and salvation is here. Many have found Christ in a graveyard. Many have found salvation in a cemetery. 1950, the late Alec Reed, the first sermon he ever preached was in a graveyard. Standing in that grave, he preached on John 14 and 6, and he told the crowd gathered there that day that when you hear the grave digger's spade clap into the ground to open your grave, then you've missed your chance in getting right with God. And that was the illustration he used. When you hear the grave digger's spade clapping into the ground to open your grave, you've missed your chance of getting right with God. He stood that day and he said this, between, your, between where you are now and your grave, there stands the Lord Jesus. And here you can find him. And here, you can make him yours. Twenty-five years after that, 1975, Alec Reed was met by a man on the Ochnacloy Street. He says, you're Mr. Reed, that's right. He says, do you mind the day you spoke at my mother's funeral? He says, I do, because that was the first time I ever spoke, Yes. He says, do you mind the illustration that you used? He says, I can't remember. What was it? You talked about the grave digger's spade clapping into the ground, and you said these words, that here and now you can find Christ and make Him yours, and you can find Him now. He says, Mr. Reed, as I stood at the edge of my mother's grave, I want you to know I found Christ there, and I was saved. I'll tell you, friends, tonight, you can find Christ in the cemetery, and you can find salvation in the cemetery, maybe perhaps more so than you can find Him here. But tonight, the Lord brings us through the Word of God to the cemetery tonight, to this graveyard. And my text tonight is John 11, verse 45. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on Him. And I want you to notice, first of all, in that text, there is the crowd that was gathered. Here stands a cemetery this evening. A great crowd has gathered and this crowd tonight has no idea as to what is about to happen. Oh, they're familiar with death, yes. They're familiar tonight with the trimmings and the trappings of the cemetery. But tonight here in this cemetery this evening, the crowd that was gathered, they've no idea what was going to take place. You know, friends, I often think of the cemetery. 
And as I looked upon this, and as the Holy Spirit led my thoughts to this portion of Scripture tonight, and to verses 45 and 46, I saw the great crowd gathered. And I'll tell you this, I saw them divided too. There's a divided crowd. I want you to notice, first of all, there's, there's always the careless crowd at a graveyard. There's always the crowd gathered there, and there's no interest in what's been said. There's no interest in God. There's no interest in what is being preached. There's no interest in Christ, and there's no interest in their own souls. You know, I was at a funeral last Tuesday, a week ago it was. The same funeral I was telling you about this morning. And as they were carried the coffin to the grave, do you know, Tracy and me were coming out of the church, and in the church pew, there was a man roll, doing up wee rolly cigarettes in the church. Couldn't wait to get outside. And as soon as we got outside the church, man, they were laughing, man, they were giggling, man, they were lighting up, man, they were heading on, while the graveside service was taking place. You know, friends, I have witnessed that time and time again. There's a crowd in the graveyard, and mind ye, they've, they've no time, they've no thought concerning their own soul, and they've no interest in God, and they've no interest in the Lord Jesus Christ, and they've no thought for eternity. Wonder you among that crowd tonight. It's a dangerous crowd to be in with. A crowd that laughs in a cemetery. A crowd that has no time for God. A crowd that says, Ah, sure, it's just another funeral. Sure, it's just another internment. It's just another burial. Little do they know, little do they know they could be the next funeral. Little do they know theirs could be the next grave dug. I'm telling you, unsafe friend, we well, don't think about these things because we don't like to. On Thursday evening, Our Thursday dinner time, we'll go back to half one. There was a wee girl called Shannon Weir. Sent our Rebecca a wee snapshot to her mobile phone. And half past three, she was killed in a car accident. And there's another grave dug tonight, not for an 80-year-old, but for a 20-year-old. This night last week, she was well. This night last week, life was just normal. Tonight, she's in eternity. This night last week, my auntie, was sitting watching songs of praise. You never missed it. She went in for an operation on Thursday. Things went wrong against, things went against her. Last evening, Teresa and I were in the ICU with her in the, in the, the other ward beside her. And when we got her to where she recognized her, we pointed her to the Lord. And tonight in and around about six o'clock, just before it came to the service, word come through that just passed away. This night, week ago, life was normal for her. Life was normal for that wee lassie. I'll tell you, it's a different tale tonight. Life is normal for you. But this night, next week, could be a different tale. But in this 
crowd tonight. There's not only the careless crowd, but I want you to notice that there's the concerned crowd. There's the crowd that's taking everything in. There's the crowd that's looking on, and there's the crowd that's really concerned. You'll always get the crowd, maybe not as big as the other crowd, but you'll always get the people who thinks at a graveyard. Wonder would the next funeral be my funeral? And if it was, where would I be? Friend, tonight, listen to me. If this week brings in your funeral, because listen, let me tell you this tonight, young person, you listen. Your coffin could already be on the shelf. And the petrol could be already in the hearse that will take you to your grave. You concern tonight because you need to be. It's appointed unto men once to die. After this, the judgment. The crowd that was gathered. In this text tonight, not only do you have the crowd that is gathered, you have the Christ that was God. Look what it says in the middle of that text. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did. Will you notice tonight the crowd focused on Christ? They saw the things which Jesus did. Do you know, friends, tonight it's a great cemetery when the whole focus is brought brought to the Lord Jesus. There's many boys at a funeral waffle in a graveyard, but it's my duty and calling to bring Christ before the people. Because I want to say this tonight, dear unsaved friend, Christ tonight is the only Savior of sinners. Christ here on this occasion done two miracles. He raised Lazarus from the dead. But let me tell you this, that wasn't the greatest miracle that day. The greatest miracle this day was people believed on him. Don't you think for one minute that raising Lazarus from the dead was the greatest miracle in this cemetery? Not at all. Those who believed on him. At that moment, that was the greatest miracle. Because salvation is a miracle of grace. I'll tell you why this is the greatest miracle. Because the Lord Jesus only had to call Lazarus once, and he came out. And there's some, and the Lord has called for years, and they're still dead. And tonight, dear unsaved friend, you're the Lazarus in a spirit you'll sense because the Bible says you're dead in trespasses and in sins. An unsaved friend tonight, you're a spiritual corpse wrapped up in the rags of sin and in the sepulcher of sin. And how many times has God Christ spoke to you? How many times has He called you? And you're still lying there in your sin. But Lazarus, oh, he just had the call the once, you know. Lazarus came out. Lazarus came forth. You know, dear unsaved friend tonight, you listen to me. The people learned there that day that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I want to take you for these moments to Calvary's cross and let me show you what Jesus did for you. Do you know, friend, that Calvary, He gave His life for you? Do you know what the place called Calvary, He was crucified for you? Do you know what the place called Calvary, He suffered for you? At the place called Calvary, He bled for you. At the place called Calvary tonight, He died there for you. He died there that we might live. Listen, friend, this evening. Look to Christ tonight. There was the crowd in the cemetery. They looked to Him. They didn't look to Lazarus. They looked to the Lord. They looked to the Lord. 
Proverbs 21, 16 says, The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. What does that mean? Right? Those who reject Christ, those who don't want to hear the gospel, they're still in the congregation of the dead. If you're not saved tonight, you're in the congregation of the dead. The Bible says, The crowd that was gathered, the Christ that was God, the conversions that was great. They believed on Him. I'll tell you, there was more than Lazarus came alive that day. Every one of this crowd that believed in Him got eternal life. You see, friends, this evening, the Lord Jesus says, I give unto my sheep eternal life. They shall never perish. That day in that cemetery, oh, there was one, there was more than one man came alive. Oh, friend, there was a, there was a crowd came alive who, when the moment they believed on him, they came alive spiritually. And I often think, you know, I often think what a cemetery, what a cemetery. To witness the power of the Lord Jesus that was able to bring the dead out of the grave. Ah, but the greatest miracle was that day when Christ brought the dead out of their sin. He that believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Can I urge you tonight, dear unsaved friend, are you going to be one of the crowd tonight that's going to be concerned and believe on him? He that believeth on him shall have everlasting life, and he that believeth not on him is condemned already, and that's the script. Friend, tonight, think of the cross. Think of his blood. Think of his pain. He did this for you, that you would live forever. And tonight he calls you from the sepulcher of sin. Will you come forth tonight? For these people who believed on him, the cemetery became a precious place. Every time they attended a funeral in it after that day, they would say, this is where it happened for me. This is where I met the Savior. And tonight, the same Lord Jesus that stood in that cemetery and called Lazarus forth is in this tabernacle tonight, and he's calling you. Will you come forth tonight? Will you believe on him? And these Jews tonight, I'll tell you, took guts for them to do it because they had to break every tradition of their own religion to do it. You need to trust them tonight. Forget about all the old silly nonsense that you're trusting in. Trust in him tonight. He's the only Savior. They believed on him. Will you? Let's bow our heads together in prayer. Tonight, in the stillness of these moments, the Savior stands with us. And maybe tonight you have heard his voice. You've heard his call. Come tonight. Lord, we just leave the eternal issues of this meeting with thee. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Our closing hymn is